Welcome back to JSA TV. We are live from London for DCD Connect here, uh, right here at the Business Design Center in Islington in the beautiful city of London. I'm Buffy Harakitis of JSA and joining me today for our very first interview of day two of DCD Connect is Alex Brew of Vertev. He is the regional director of Northern Europe here live uh, for day two. So welcome, Alex. It's great to be here. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, the conference floor is already buzzing. There's a line over there at the coffee station. We are here on the east balcony of day two here at DCG Connect. And AI is obviously uh, one of the hottest topics in the industry and especially here at this conference. So why don't we dive into the first question where we talk about AI and the massive changes that it is uh, causing across the industry and some of those requirements when it comes to the requirements of the data center. Why don't we talk about how Vertiv is adapting its infrastructure solutions to meet these growing demands? Sure, sure. So I think um, there's, so many, there's so many things to it. Yes, uh, so many. Obviously, the, big, the biggest one is probably liquid cooling. Um, we've been talking about that for quite some time now, but we know that AI applications are significantly more dense. They consume more power. There's more compute that uh, customers of, of various different profiles are trying to get into any one given rack. Um, and with that higher power consumption comes a higher density of compute, which means we need far more um, efficient and higher density cooling systems. So through our own in-house development, strategic acquisitions that we've made in, in, in the last 18 months, um, we've brought to market a really comprehensive portfolio of liquid cooling solutions. Um, we're seeing the most demand at the moment in, in CDUs, um, but we're also manufacturing our own, uh, our own immersive. Um, as well as um, other more hybridized type systems to, to kind of cater for um, each and every application that the market is looking to present. Vertiv's ethos from a, uh, a sort of product standpoint is never to unify ourselves on one particular type of technology within a given field. Customers uh, are so diverse in terms of their requirements and we have to be able to cater and consult with them to understand what the right solutions are for their specific needs and then leverage the benefits of our you know, our service and project delivery offerings to, to support them in those types of, of deployment. So, so liquid cooling is, is very much there, but now really we're seeing advancements beyond that. If we talk about the powertrain, the densities that we're having to co accommodate in terms of power distribution to the rack, the rack themselves, um, you know, the suites of software that we need to be uh, providing in terms of governance and management of all of this type of technology, the criticality of it is, is super high. That hasn't changed, right? The applications are um, are becoming more diverse. AI is presenting you know, new options to our customers in terms of how they want to run their businesses, but they will become and will be equally business critical. So what we're having to do as an organization is to kind of to keep up with the speed at which it's evolving mm -hmm. is really standardize on complete solutions. So we've launched the 360 AI platform, which is a suite of not just cooling products for AI or power products for AI, but it's actually complete turnkey solutions. Um, and we're developing uh, that offering with our partners um, to bring to market so that customers can basically capitalize and take advantage of, um, of, of AI for their businesses sooner. That's going to take different shapes and forms between you know, the co-location markets, the enterprise markets, um, you know, more industrial-based applications, whatever it may be. But what we've invested in, again, is a strength in that, uh, that portfolio to, to complement everyone's ambitions within, within the space. Right. And when it comes to these solutions and especially the growing requirements for power uh, to support AI workloads, tell me a little bit more about the sustainability angle that you guys uh, are working on when it comes to sustainability and some of those innovations, yeah. especially when we talk about greener data uh, and how the industry is moving forward to be more sustainable. It's, it's, it's a really interesting point, right? Because the way that AI has burst onto the scene, it, it's not it's not displacing some of the original and pre-existing compute loads that were there, right? It's a brand new tier of compute. And we know that society and, um, and businesses can stand to benefit from it um, in the long run, but it will be burdening you know, the utility networks with, with a lot more power uh, utilization. So, but what it brings with it and what our technology is, is working to also capitalize on is opportunity to embrace far more holistic, circular economy-led operational practices for data centers. And part of that is because of the byproducts um, that data centers produce, particularly those that are supporting higher density applications. So 
If we talk about um, liquid cooling as an example, liquid cooling traditionally now will be operating at, at higher temperatures within the data center, which means the byproduct of waste that is what we spend all that time trying to get rid of, the power that, that, that these servers are consuming is exhausted as heat and the cooling systems are there to get rid of that heat. Well, that heat's more useful because it's hotter. It's something that we can uh, take and expend less energy on to, uh, to, to either interface with district heating systems or to use as a byproduct for fueling greenhouse farming or for um, you know, coupling with industrial applications, whatever it may be. The key kind of segue on that is making sure that the development of these sites is close coupled with um, other types of uh, facilities. This is something that needs to be orchestrated in a lot of instances by, by local governments when it comes to planning consensus and everything else to kind of capitalize on it. If data centers just develop in isolation, then it's a missed opportunity, it's a missed window. The cooling part's kind of quite well known now, but I think the other piece is also the power um, uh, kind of sustainability angle. So we've done a lot of work with dynamic grid support our uh, UPS systems are often an energy, an energy center. They're, they're the kind of interface um, in terms of power management within the data center. And what we've done is look to connect that with the utility grid provision. So we can do dynamic grid support by way of fre frequency regulation or, or peak locking. And what that means from a sustainability point of view is that the UPS can manage all these power reserves that exist inside a data center and it can interface with the grid. And when the grid needs a little bit of support to regulate frequency or for the data center to isolate itself to save it having to utilize a less sustainable power generation source to meet with the demand um the the the, the ups can do that ups is have oh sorry the data center can do that data centers have huge power reserves right. and so our technology is providing mechanisms to use those in in terms of more sustainable practices so we see big advancements in that in that arena mark far more uptake coming from the industry now as it's more recognized um, and then the other thing is actually looking at on-site backup power. So diesel generators, there's now a bit more of a move to, um, to more greener fuels, but also we've been looking at how we can interface uh, the powertrain with the likes of hydrogen fuel cells, for example. So we had a, a partnership with Ballard that was launched uh, or announced earlier this year, and that's all about um, the use of HFO or, or HFC uh, as, as a backup power generation and, and the particularities that we need to cater for in terms of how those technologies interface. But that's definitely yes. one to look out for as well. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely important that more and more operators look at some of yeah. these alternative energy solutions, uh, especially as sustainability continues to push yeah. to the forefront. But the challenge we have in terms of our own sustainable practices is often driven around supply chain, right? So it's the embodied carbon associated with our products. Exactly. Um, we have a very large, diverse, globalized supply chain and globally different regions are more advanced in terms of their 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 kind of recognition of um you know the need to conform and to improve um and our, our customers are holding us to account on that and so we're holding our suppliers to account on right. That, right and that that trickle effect is is certainly gaining momentum um and then we're seeing changes in terms of how we're developing products so we launched the the timber mod platform which is our, our prefabricated uh, uh solution um, and instead of using traditional construction methodologies for prefab, we're now using timber, which is a regenerative, regenerative product. It's more sustainable by definition. Um, and we're starting to see the industry accepting these types of practices, which is great. So things are definitely moving it is forward. Great. Definitely moving forward, especially here uh, in London. The yeah. conversations are all around how the industry is moving forward exactly. uh, to be more sustainable and to meet these growing demands of AI. And you mentioned that you were going to be on a panel just in a few minutes. Yeah. Uh, so why don't you tell viewers a little bit more about that panel? Uh, and if you are here at the show, to be sure to catch Alex on the panel coming I, it, up. Yeah, it, it's um, it's it's really interesting. It's it's a cohort, and and what it's doing is bringing representatives from from all different corners of the industry. So we have co-location operators, end users, manufacturers, contractors, um, consultants, the whole ecosystem. Um, and the idea behind uh, the, the, the panel is to look at what level of collaboration, transparency and alignment is really required to um, advance data centers into a true net zero space. So we'll be looking at how we define what net zero is in the context of data centers, and then whatever the individual roles, the collaboration and the alignment or, or conflicting agendas that we need to address um, to help kind of uh, pioneer more more net zero practices or, or kind of steer us more down that path. So it should be a really good discussion. Yeah, it sounds like it. A critical discussion for sure. So if you're at the show, be sure to catch Alex on that panel coming up just in a few minutes. And thank you viewers for tuning in to another episode of JSA TV. 
live from DCD Connect London. And if viewers want to learn more about Vertiv, uh, can you tell them where to go? Vertiv.com. Vertiv.com. Yeah, we've got all our, all our information there. And, and please, by all means, feel free to reach out to me as well. And thank you so much, Alex, for joining us for JSA TV. Viewers, stay curious, stay connected, and happy networking.